remember how I had said that one way of trying to do this um, guy, trying to figure it out, would be to um, kind of simply draw the three faces or the three projections on the uh, on the isometric block that you would be drawing, right? And so, if you were to do that, you would, you know, kind of go like that and, and just sort of, you know, more or less get all the parts there, right? So that being this part from above, then this guy would be from here. Then I said, well, okay, you can do that, and then you can just try to carve it out and, you know, see what happens. And that wasn't really much of a system, right, because I said, you can, you can sort of try, see what happens. But as I was, let's see, this is like this, right? So what do we do now? Of course, we have to take out some stuff, but we don't really know what we want to take out. Well, as it turns out, as we were doing it with one of the students, I realized that, in fact, there is a way to go from this step one step further and actually figure it out exactly. And that is that if you, if you think that this, or if you realize that all these relationships between the three parts, right, this would being the top, this being the front, this being the side, you can see that you know, all these points correspond, right? I mean, there's obviously a relationship, and this point has to match that, this has to match that, and so forth. Um, by the way, backtracking it for a moment, you have to do this drawing at 150%, and then you have to do this part, the unknown part, at 50% of that, which is the same as saying that this guy is, is at... Um, so if this goes 150%, and then this goes at 50% of that, it's the same as saying this is 75% of this. Okay? Um, so that's just a little... If you, if you don't want to get too, too confused, because if you start out with something that's this big, right? Each one of these is 25%. If I make it 150%, I add 50 more, right? So this was 100, 150. And now, once I have that, now I do half of that. And I end up with 75, okay? So that's just another way of doing it. Um, meaning that instead of taking your measurements for your, from your enlarged views, you could, in theory, take your measurements for that from this and just go at 75, okay? Which, in which case, you would need to use the three-quarter scale from your scale if you, would, if you were using the scale. All right, so. Um, anyway, back to this. Uh, what I realized as I was talking to the student was that, in fact, we can apply this correspondence theory, you might call it, of lines, uh, you know, projecting from one view to the next in that skewed view. That is, I can now try to take this. Oops. Sorry. So the same correspondences that we have here between these three faces, we can now... In, in a way, kind of depict in a 3D view, which is still a construct, right? I mean, it's not a real thing, but that means that if I want to find out where this spot here is, this V, in my 3D block, literally all I have to do is to drop this down, right, from my top view and dropping it down to my front view, or I'm dropping it down, period. Uh, actually, it's the other way, you wouldn't see it, but and then I take this point and I go across. So in other words, I, I do these two movements. And wherever they, they meet, that's my point. And of course now, well not that I exactly know, but I can imagine that these are on the top. So I, I start connecting the dots this way. Okay? 
So I'm going to do one, uh, which I adapted from this, so that's not the exact solution. Um, and I'm just going to quickly show it, which is this. And I'm just going to show how to go about it, okay? Pretending it's the one. Pretending it's the one that you have to do, so I'm just going to put more vellum so that you can actually see That is, I can see that you can't. And we'll just reconstruct it. Okay, so now I'm just going to pretend that my object has this shape. Which is similar to what we have, right? It has kind of the similar, similar features. That's my top. to show you still this up here I have to unfortunately I have to draw down below no maybe I'll draw on top so everybody can see okay so let's now just draw that box again I'm drawing pretty hard right I'm, I'm doing my lines really thick but you don't want to do that you want to keep your construction lines really light um, and now let's just transfer this now because I'm doing it by hand it's you know I'm gonna have to Trial and error a little bit, but uh, let's see. So I transferred the top this way. So now what we can do literally, we can just I'm gonna move it a little bit. We can literally move our points. Now it's gonna, there's gonna be a little overlap, but let's just try that. So my this point right here, which is this guy, I'm gonna drop down and where he meets this point right here. I get my first point. Now these are pretty much already there. Now I just connect it. Um, now let's try to figure out, this is very likely an inclined plane, right? It's sloping down that way, and it's sloping down this way. So let's figure out what that is. I bring it across, again, I'm gonna really emphasize this now this way and where does it stop? It stops where it meets my corner right here which is this one. So I bring it down where they meet. That's my line and now this point goes this way And I get my other line right here. Well, this should be parallel, right? Now it's shorter, right? So I can do it a couple of things. I can simply project that and this. And where this one meets the bottom one. And this meets this one. I get that. Okay, so that, that was quite an interesting. 
story, I guess. Because this is parallel, I can kind of know that this is going to be parallel to that, so I'm just going to draw it. And what else? The rest is easy because it's just this little square cut out, and that uh, I can just go like that. Oh, I forgot the little bit here. Right? And that's easy because, again, we know that it's just a simple cut out. And that's it. So. So what you can do is sketch this by hand if you want, which I recommend because it's it's a good exercise anyway. Uh, forget this. So I get confused there. And I was thinking, you know, it's all thanks to that famous guy, you know the. The I think therefore I am guy. You know him, right? No, what does it what does it say? It's like this. So I think therefore I am. I guess that's Latin for that. And he figured out, of course, right? That thing. Cartesian coordinates, Cartesian coordinates, so it's based on that. Um, Alright, so one way of doing it.